Welcome to Cutting It Close, a channel where we talk woodworking technology, a little bit of business, and make some cool projects. And in today's video is going to be my third video in which I talk about different types of CNC bits. My first video I talked about the O flute, which is like a perfect bit for uh, plastics. The second video I talked about a serrated rougher, which I believe is the perfect video of the perfect bit for pocketing material. And in this video, I'm going to go over the chip breaker. Now, if you haven't watched a serrated rougher video that I made, I highly advise it before watching this video because it kind of um, tells you a lot about what the chip breaker is going to be used for. And my best analogy of what the chip breaker uh, bit is, it's like if a finisher bit and a serrated rougher bit got together, got married, and had a kid, you would get the chip breaker. Now, I'm going to go over three things about this bit. I'm going to go over what the bit is why you would use it, and how you would use it. So with that being said, first, what is the chip breaker? So what is a chip breaker? Now, in my hand, I have a finisher, I have a chip breaker, and I have serrated rougher. And once again, if this one and this one had a child, it would be a chip breaker. See the serrated rougher kind of looks like a serrated knife right there. And see if a finisher has these nice clean edges. Well, a chip breaker, whoop, let, it, let it zoom back in for you. So a chip breaker has these little serrated little nicks on there. I call them little chip breakers. And what they are is that's what kind of makes it be able to go as faster than a finisher, but still cut um, like a rougher. Okay, so faster than a finisher still cuts like a rougher. So I have this piece of paper right here that's kind of going to show you why. So these little um, little nicks are actually staggered. So this is like part of the uh, rougher slash chip breaker, okay? And then there's like a finisher blade. So you have, and if, you, if I get a line for you, so here's a straight line, right? So every time there's a chip breaker or a little rougher serration, you have a flat edge finisher right there as well. So any point on the bit, um, the finisher covers up the serrated edge. Once again, you have a serration, then you have a um, finisher bit once again, and then you have a pretty much a rougher again. So this bit is literally a combination of a serrated rougher and a finisher. So as you're cutting, this is going to um, kind of break that chip or break those fibers in your wood. This is going to leave a clean edge, and this is once again going to allow you to cut a little bit faster. So you can run it faster than a finisher, um, and you have to run it slower than a rougher, but it gives you a, still a clean finish because this, these are staggered. Um, I hope that makes sense. I hope this helps. Now let's go on to why and who uses a chip breaking bit. So who uses this bit is somebody that needs a pretty good cut, but they still need to go fast. So once again, this bit is not going to give you a cut as clean as a finisher. Um, it's probably going to give you about 90 to 80% as clean as a finisher, but it's going to be a lot smoother than a rougher, right? Well, a rougher, you can run really fast. A finisher, you're going to have to run a little bit slower, and a chip breaker's right in the middle. So if you're a furniture maker, and let's say you're cutting out, I don't know, you just need parts, some kind of weird shape like this cut out. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but it can't be really rough, right? You're going to use a chip breaker in that scenario. Whereas if you needed it really smooth, you would probably go, and if you're a, a bigger cabinet shop or a bigger furniture maker, you would go in with a serrated rougher and cut this out and then come back with a finisher to smooth it out and have a smooth finish. But if it's maybe, let's say it's plywood um, and not hardwood, you use that chip breaker to go in there and cut it out and you only need one pass. It saves twice the amount of time um, and you know, your, your parts looking good. Maybe you still have to sand it so you don't really care if it's a perfect pristine edge on it or something like that. The other thing that I personally have used it for is if I'm pocketing out a plywood or making a big bowl or something, um, you know that bird's nest that kind of gets made in there? Let's say if you're, if you're going back and forth on your pocketing and you get all these little frizzies, what this chip breaker does, that little serrated edge on it, that serrated edge is going to cut that fiber um, where it doesn't make this bird's nest looking thing on your project. Now some of you probably want me to run my CNC um, and show you how to use it um, or how to cut it or what it looks like. 
it looks the same as a finisher bit. Um, so it just looks like a smooth cut. There's not really anything crazy to look at. It's going to sound like a bit. Um, it's going to sound like a CNC running. It's nothing crazy. So I'm not actually not going to show it ran on my CNC because it's nothing special. I mean, it's right in between a serrated rougher and a finisher. But that's kind of what companies that I've talked to actually use it for. Um, or if you don't have an automatic tool changer and you just need to run a single bit and you need to run it faster than a finisher can go, um, you use the chip breaker and it works perfectly. So that's a little synopsis of who uses it and why they use it. I hoped that part helped. Now, let's go to how to use the bit. So how would you use this bit? So let's say you have a hobby type CNC. You would probably not be using this chip breaker because I think the smallest size to go down to is 3 eighths of an inch, which if you only have up to a three horsepower spindle on your CNC, um, you're, you're not gonna be able to run it at the feeds and speeds it needs to get ran at. So I wouldn't advise using this chip breaker on your smaller type CNC. Now, if you have a bigger type CNC, um, where I would use it at is, let's say you have a bigger type CNC, you don't have an automatic tool changer, I would take this chip breaker, uh, stick it in your CNC, and run it on some plywood. I personally like cutting plywood with it because plywood um, gets kind of fuzzy sometimes, and you know I, I just like using a chip breaker on it. And usually on my type of products, I'm still sanding after I cut them out, and so I'll use this, I'll cut it out. It'll be not, once again, not a 100% finished edge like a finisher would be. It's about 80 to 90% just as good. Um, and then I hit it with a sander, hit it with 180 grit, you know, and it's good, it's ready to go. Um, I can also run it faster and it lasts a little bit longer than my finisher as well. It doesn't last as long as my serrated rougher um, and, it, and it lasts longer than my finisher. So once, I, once again, it's if a rougher and a finisher had a child, it would be a chip breaker. So if you're cutting out some projects and you need to do a little bit of pocketing and you need to cut those fibers, you need to break those chips, I would use a chip breaker for that. I hope this video helped. I hope you came away with more knowledge than when you started. I tried to make this short and concise for you, um, try to jam pack a lot of information in there. So please give this a like and leave a comment in the comment section if you got some kind of value from this video. And as always, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.